how it's going. So, um, this is going to be the start of a fresh, you know, like a beginner, no, no items in the bank sort of thing. A caster that's going to be a cabalist, I think. I'll kind of like talk about what we have kind of theory crafted so far, you know, what would be like be the best target to go to? How can we make such a character that is going to be strong and easy to get to in the, um, in the late game? But before that, we have a character creation to make. Let's call it, um, Cabalist Fresh. We can play in the veteran. I'm going soft course simply because I don't necessarily want to mess around with my saves. I have so many items, you know, um, and obviously other things in the hardcore. I usually play just hardcore. So soft core is going to give me a fresh start. So this is going to be sort of like the character that we're going to be targeting to. The Dark One set is one of the sets in Grim Dawn that is, you know, farmable. It's not that easy, especially like if you want to compare it to like something like Craig set for the DK, Aether DK, or Battle Mage if you want to play it that way. But this one's much harder to get to simply because like the place, uh, the place that you can farm this thing is definitely harder. Uh, drop rate is considerably considerably easier in my opinion but that place is very hard so maybe you're gonna need to commit as much time uh, those two items are going to be the craft the relic is a very easy craft which is unlocking the dual wielding capability and for the most part i think we are going to be rocking like two bone spikes with basically a remnant earth caster and we'll see how it goes like the build is most likely going to be in the description and also the way that i'm going to be leveling it and this is going to be a long journey. I really hope that it's going to be useful for you guys. Let's go. So we're going to start with the Necromancer. I'll most likely be following my normal routes again when it comes to like leveling. Don't necessarily think I'm going to be like slowing down all that much. Uh, but we, we're going to need to definitely like pay attention to, you know, some sort of like itemization a little bit more. That rotting soldier is actually really annoying and I want to click this corpse. <laughs> there we go. So I'm thinking of like leveling with necromancer skeletons all the way up to like level 25, maybe like 27 or something like that. Simply because like the bone spike that we're gonna find, the dagger that is like boosting up and modifying, um, yeah, the ravenous earth is farmable around like mountain deeps, which we should be about like that level when we reach there. And on top of that, like necromancer start is very easy, so why not? Let's do it that way. Take that pet attack there. Use that here. So, what you could do is like this pet attack ability right over here. You have that with like pretty much every single character. You don't even need a pet. But obviously, to utilize it, you would like to have pets. Now, you can actually like place your pets anywhere you want with it. As you can see, like you can control them. This kind of gives you the capability of like abusing. Or like using utilizing this to um have like procs or like how to position them take them out of the fire etc and yeah the mod that i'm using is called grim internals and that is the only mod that i'm using in this game in fact I actually like that the left side is open. Let's try to go for the Undead Legion. Ah, left side is closed. Shit. Let's 
some movement speed perhaps. Not really. And take the waypoints here. Turn back to save the guy. I'm going to be rotating my camera excessively for the most part. If you're new to Grim Dawn, it might actually annoy you a little bit if you're coming from like other ARPGs. But it definitely does help to keep the monsters, you know, at the top side of your screen. And on top of that, it's like easier to see the monsters from the corners of your, you know, screen. Definitely because like you have a wider point of view for sure. And I'm also streaming, and this is stream recording, so most likely be interacting with the chat quite a bit as well. Now, eat dolphins! You're not supposed to be eating dolphins! How's it going? Welcome to the local lounge. I actually don't want to kill, like, almost everything here. Well, let's position ourselves in a good spot here. <laughs> he says om nom nom. Okay. Thank you very much for that sub. Appreciate it. The Aether Crystals are going to be useful. My skeletons are so weak. Not too bad experience here though, I don't mind. We could get like a couple of points into... I've been thinking like, am I going to need any cunning at all? You think to like, wield the bone spike? At the end of the day, bone spike is... Some sort of like a dagger. Mm, I really don't want to give any cunning right now. You can never go wrong with physique, so... Let's go with physique for now. Okay, there we go. It took me a while to realize, but the undead is almost infinite as long as you have the crystals up, so... We actually finally have a archer with us as well, that's pretty cool. The Archer is going to do work here now. If you manage to survive, then it's... It might be a little bit better for you to, like, actually go for a couple of more points into the skeleton. Um, I think this was, a, this was a little bit too greedy, overall. Going for the Undead Legion first. Because it's going a little bit slower than I expected it to. Uh, when you dump more points into the skeleton summon, you actually over obviously like make them more powerful. So, in my opinion, it would have been better getting like body blocked here all over the place. We can click this thing right over here and that thing right over there to make the minimap bigger. We don't necessarily need to see the common drops. Close that. Okay, we have new pants. New pants. Two archers, I don't want to summon them again. <laughs> mm. I actually have a lot of HP for level 5, since we have given a couple of masteries. After taking this crystal, we can bail. 
So you can just like open your map, local map, and then click the waypoint to TP instantly. In Grim Dawn, most of the time, like even in, in dangerous situations, you can escape like this. That is nice. Finally, the Undead Legion here now. Oops. Undo. Let me see like how many spawns you get. This was a mistake in my opinion. We should have definitely given a lot more into this, for sure. It's too greedy. It's going to be requiring three, right? Mm. Okay. We don't have the scrap for this guy. Can take our first devotion node as well. I think I'm going to be going for the bats. It's going very well with both the skeletons and also the Revenish Earth, so that is pretty useful. Just gonna rush for it. Yeah, for the scraps you could actually like open some corpses, some small chests. Should definitely like be on the lookout for that. Stuff like that definitely helps. Pile of scraps on the floor. Our pets are not surviving anything. Even the cooldown is up, actually. There's some sort of like a discussion that I see all the time, you know, which one is like faster leveling, like normal versus veteran, and then people say like, yeah, but like veteran is more experienced. I mean, don't go, don't, don't fall for that. Uh, you will always be leveling slower in veteran, simply because stuff are like lots, you know, taking a lot more for you to kill. Um, and the same could be said even if you have the starting gear. Uh, there will be a point where you would like to have a little bit more resistances versus a boss. Or, you know, the boss is going to be a little bit tankier versus your spec. Which otherwise you would have just two-shot him in the normal. So if you're just like rushing through the normal, it's usually better to just play in normal difficulty. But as a first player, in my opinion, it's definitely the better experience to play on veteran. This game, that is. So we do want to kill the Sleth. Like, I... Simply because like these are dropping really good components uh, Specifically frozen hearts and on top of that we want some sleth necklace drop for a quest as well So I'm going to be like killing pretty much like every single sleth that we find along the way And sleth are those like insects the, the monsters bee skins rather Okay, I don't think we found any Slith Necklace, unfortunately. That was kind of bad. I swear that one is wrong. Why not? Shield is actually very bad. So even though we are in softcore, I'll try my best not to die. Like, I don't necessarily like dying in games, but I do definitely see myself dying when we get to, like, you know, in a couple of fights when we get to, like, level 100, and when we are, like, farming the Dark One set. You should probably be dying in there. That, that place is probably difficult for, especially a starting account. I would say so. So, I, I would see myself, like, dying in there, but that should be okay. Like, this guide is not going to be, you know that hardcore optimized let's just say like it's a, it's a good beginner character but we can we can try and you know, do whatever we can try and survive that too these little skeletons are actually like absolutely terrible against these creatures apparently in veteran maybe start using a rifle instead as well because it's me that is dealing this damage let's go into the rifle it's a little bit late, even. OK, 
taking the crystal first. I could. We actually have two, three archers for once. Finally catching a break here a little bit. That's nice. This is how it's supposed to be looking. <laughs> My archers are gone now, of course. Taking that note. How's it going, Posh Mill? Welcome, bro. Some leather boots. They actually require a little bit higher level than me for some reason. It's actually level 12. Summon a little bit more. So I can actually like show you my map after finding the Whitemire Rifts. What I usually tend to do is like kill this guy right over there and from there we're going to be making like a massive circle that's going to end up like taking the waypoint and at the same time entering the cave. And the cave is going to have a devotion shrine in it so that's why it's important. One thing that is like incredibly good in Grim Dawn is that like if you get used to basically the attack animations of monsters you can reliably sidestep or like stutter step it every single time unless they have crazy amounts of like attack speed. level 10 as well i could definitely go back and sell do care about my item bits now to kill some sleth i'm actually gonna go back and sell real quick we could also like check out the npc if there's anything don't really care about playing in la right now it's probably just better to have uh something like this in fact on this Often, but yeah, it's a good one. Just to like boost. Those two are really good. That one's not so bad. I want movement speed on my boost if there's any. There's no movement speed so far. The helm, more HP. Yeah, sure, more armor as well. We could use that. Right, might as well complete this too. How about the scraps? Did I manage to find them? Yes. I'll take care of the Slith in the cave. He has a quest inside this cave, but I want to turn back before I space out from this. I'll just kind of like take the devotion points inside the cave. I can level up my skeletons right now, but it's going to despawn all of them. So I think I'm just going to like defeat this pack before. We gotta commit like one and two maybe there. Wow, three skeletons. What is going on here? Also found a ring. So far, two necklaces here, guys. Let's continue killing some stuff. Getting a little bit stronger here, but at the same time, we're probably out leveling it too.
Nice, nice. Does feel a lot stronger now, thanks to the skeletons. So if I had to do this one more time, you guys, I would probably give a couple more points at the start, right to the raised skeletons, maybe like five, six, and then start like building up to the undead legion. But no matter like what how you do it, I am guessing uh, it's going to be rather slow for some time if you're in veteran, for sure. You could loot this place. All right, that's it. Let's go to the Barnabas cave. It's possible to find um, Slith necklace from this place as well, so kind of searching for it. We're going to get a ring upgrade for resistances. And we have a new devotion point, I think, right? Start the bats. White hit and bleed damage, which gives us nothing in this... <laughs> Uh, shape and form, let's say. Yeah, we're pretty stronger now. Archers are doing work. And start running around even without shooting stuff. I like that. So, three summon limits and one more into this. Oh my god, that pack is terrible though. Three peasants. So like throughout the entire playthrough you're gonna see me like skip lots of monsters. How do you like decide which monsters to skip, which monsters to kill? You can you can definitely like treat it as a, a progressive man manner. So if, if the place that you're in is like you know difficult for you, well you could go ahead and like kill everything. Because your character needs to be uh progressing as well, right? You don't want to be keep on falling behind. Just like outside, I was killing like almost all, all the zombies because it was feeling rough. Like I, I don't want that to be getting rougher even. But if it's going silky smooth, like it doesn't necessarily uh, require you to kill everything at all. You can continue and progress it a bit further. Some of the tigers say it's a bit more valuable than the others, like just because of frozen hearts. These are very valuable. Same can be said for like mutated scales or like batter shells from like insects or bees. Uh, if you're new to Grimdown, there's a video on my channel called Components for Beginners. I would heavily suggest you to check it out. It's about like a 10 minute video which is going to be you know, introducing components to you. Make you sort of like have your way ease into them. What does this require? Just one crystal. Sounds good. I have absolutely no resistances so far. Might not be able to carry all this, in fact. We could drop that on the floor and we can like manually check these if they're good or not. Hand cannon. Check this out. It's an upgrade. Let's hope we don't need that. Hopefully my skeletons are going to be strong enough to carry me around after that. Let's we'll see. Level 10. Any devotion points again. This time it's fighter to decay and offensive ability. It's the guy that we save. Quests are actually like not giving me that much right now. So we have some pens here, definitely much better than mine. Some necklace. Uh, 5% HP is not the greatest, but 
mine was pretty bad as well. We can start using our gloves. Any movement speed moves is going to be dumpstering the others, even the elemental resistance. Ah, <laughs> uh, sure. That's yeah, terrible though, overall, I think. Uh, we can go talk to the spirit guide as well. He has a little bit of an experience boost for me. Yeah, so slith necklaces. Do we have three of them? Unfortunately not. Let's continue from uh, the fucky bank. So we are trying to find an NPC in this place and he has like three small locations. That corner right over here is one of them. The other one is going to be off to the right. It was right over here, it's not there. So the next is going to be all the way to the western side of this. Leather boots of vitality. If you have a setup like this, you know, four skeleton archers, it's definitely going to be making your game a lot easier. Battle shell is very important to pick up. We go back for that. So send this guy back to town. If you're no farm, like inside this cave isn't that bad either. We're going to be skipping in this playthrough. I don't think I'm going to need that. But it is, as I said, like, it's not that bad. You could definitely complete that cave if you like to. What's up, Ains, by the way? Welcome, dude. Nice to see you. Mandate size for untradeable, yes. Should be a countdown. How's it going, Hish? Thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you guys are having a nice Friday for yourselves and you too, whichever day it is for you. Hope you're doing fine. As you can see, they're like very irrelevant. I don't necessarily care about like killing literally everything here, it's fine. And my archers are almost two shutting them. This left, we will kill all of them. Maybe try to get the scraps from these rumbles as well, but yeah. Hey, a necklace. That's nice. So the next waypoint we find actually an extra necklace. Keep that in your bag if you have like extra necklaces before turning in the quest, simply because like you can definitely turn them in again in, in Elite as well, so. Elite difficulty, which we will most likely have to play to unlock the ultimate. I've actually a five archer set up here. This is so good. I don't want to improve my skeletons. Not not while we are fighting these, but they're already dead. So versus a pack like this, I think I'm just going to improve the main. I won't be able to summon like six of them right away anyways, so. This is a tough pack. I'm actually really curious, like how come they didn't follow me? They kind of dropped aggro after killing my skellies. It's kind of funny. That's nice. Some shoulder pads. Definitely better than mine. Some pierce assistance on those. could probably pull a little bit more. I'm not sure yet. Let's open this chest. This is actually a chest. That continues. 
Right, it's gonna bleed damage. Doesn't do anything for me right now. <laughs> hmm. I don't think he manages to decide what he wants to do here. That was interesting. So the second that I have the waypoints, I think we're going to turn back and complete the Sleth Necklace quest so that we can have like an okayish resistance at the very least, you know, elemental resistance ring. That's an okay starter ring in my opinion. It's also quest completion, why not? I'll pick up this quest as well. So we go to, I think, Whitemire. Then walk north... Northwest. This is another cool thing about Groom Dawn. If you already have the items that the quest would require, you don't necessarily need to accept the quest and then give it back. You could actually, like, have the conversation going. Which item is worse here? This one's only energy regeneration. This one's a little bit more resistance. Let's keep the resistance for now. Let's keep the resistance for now. Never mind the HP. I think I'm okay with my HP regardless. Okay. They don't seem to be getting destroyed, so to spend some time to kill them is fine. So after this, like after this quest, you have. Um, We can actually like run towards the northern side from here, make it to the road, and then to the bar witch. Now, I, I would definitely suggest you to stay away from this guy. <laughs> I think we can take him out, but there's no. <laughs> that's that's not like a random cave that spawns. Um, it's the gut one. Not right now. Priorities. So after following the road from like the northern side, you just follow the road to the waypoint. After taking the waypoint, we'll actually like turn back um, to this waypoint to like take the cave devotion shrine there. It's almost 16 now. Let's make it 16. Let's want that. We're getting the uh, the knights now. Triple peasant, one maze. Would have been better than this, my setup that is. If you don't like your skeleton setup, like you could definitely keep on summoning them. Insight leg wraps, that's an interesting one. Chaos resistance with all versus, versus all damage rather, but like hmm. Doesn't really mean much for me right now. It's not like I'm dealing chaos, I mean elemental. It's fine. Let's go for this K right over here for the devotion. That's a nice pack.
they're like level 13, they actually do manage to scale to me. I don't mind picking up some Aether Crystals, so I think we're clearing this game, in fact. Find down full. Okay, back to Bar Edge. So from the Bar Edge, we run towards like worth southwest. We have like two quests to complete here. I don't necessarily care about killing all that much, but this is the beautiful part about skeletons, anyways. They are making most of the killing while I'm like running like this to my goal. Don't really care about like itemization all that much right now either. Let's complete these two quests and then turn back to Barovesh. Only four. Is this triple maze? That's funny. It's actually triple maze. Let's hope that they don't die. Shoulder place with elemental resistance. We need this. Versus the um Actually like mine wasn't too bad either. I'm gonna go with the double HP there, it's fine. So one thing that you can do, if you're really curious about like the pet items, you can open the loot filter like this. And then you can select um, pet bonuses like this. And you will be seeing only the pet bonuses stuff. So for instance, the offhand right over here is capable of giving stuff to my pets. I don't necessarily enjoy doing this all that much. But if you really want to, you know, inside out, check out the pet items while you're playing like this at the very start. We'll convert the character to uh, Ravenous Earth later on. But yeah, we definitely do that too. Hey, I don't even have space for a diary. There we go. <laughs> I need this button to go away. And this actually didn't pop up. I don't I don't really know why. It shows it in the chat, but uh This is a much better chess piece than mine. Ah, so that's it. Back to the bar -witch. So there might actually be like an annoying interaction when it comes to um, the quest that we are going for right now, which is like the fabric, collective fabric stuff. Because uh, it does require some reputation to, to be able to, you know, uh, get to. And as a fresh start with Devil's Crossing, you might actually not have that. I'm, I'm guessing it's because like respected or something, so it's like 4.1k. Uh, oh, we can carry the fabric around till we are respected with them and then give it back. Not because of the experience, but the quest completion is giving a uh, good reputation itself too. And you can find those like fabric chests all around this place. Sazai is saying in the chat, it only requires light. So this one, the friendly, you mean? Uh, that would be nice. Because in that case, we are going to be getting it pretty much immediately. I should probably sell you guys. Instead of throwing items like this all the time. Let's go sell real quick. And I come back to this. And complete this quest as well. Not going to be checking my itemization all that much. But one thing that we can consider is that something like this, you see, like vitality damage, we can definitely consider. Vitality and acid is going to be capable of like scaling um, my Revenant's Earth soonish, we could say. It's not necessarily that soon, but yeah. So maybe you could like at this point check out the items that you're deleting if they're like, you know, supportive towards like vitality and, and acid. You could definitely keep them. I think it's going to be fine regardless. The early game of this game is pretty pretty easy, even in veterans, so it should be fine. 
some aether damage. This is um, this is a delete in my opinion. Give this quest as well. Why not? I have some devotion um, guide on YouTube. Yeah, I mean check check my YouTube, but not really sure if that is what you're searching for. There's one fabric. Alright, three of them is all you need. So after finding the three, you can leave this place as well from this side. There's a zombie in front of me. Let's go from the road. I usually take the northern road, but I've been suggested that like this place might be better to not get blocked. I'm gonna check it out. Just really do anything. I could turn around this like that. Nice, this works. Triple mage again from that. It's crazy. Ah, we can take to Aura. Open it as well, the Spectral Binding. It's gonna give me a little bit of HP right now, nothing else. If you want, you can farm this place as well. But I do believe at this point we're up leveling this content a little bit, so should be okay. Like, there's good density on, in this cave if you would like to farm it. I have everything, Mage. This has never happened to me before. Ah, oh, there's finally an archer now. Oh, two peasants, in fact. Shame. Let's pick up the notes, the low notes. Opening even like, as a fresh account, opening even like the small chests in this game definitely goes a long way because that is how you find like various different components in this game. Uh, when you play it a couple of hundred hours, let's say, I want to take that note as well downstairs. I think it came out from like a bookcase. Um, afterwards, like the small chests are a little bit less valuable simply because like you kind of stack up on the components that they're capable of dropping. So it doesn't matter at that point, but at the very first start, like I think you open and interact with everything that's uh, breakable, let's say, or openable, yeah. In the long run, like you won't need to farm them because you will have them in the bank then. I think I'm gonna like push the character all the way to like mountain deeps, which is the place that is capable of dropping the bone spikes for our ravenous earth before switching to ravenous earth. Um, and because of this reason, like we could definitely try and get the MI from uh, Warden as well. We could maybe like kill him even one more time if he doesn't drop it for sure. Maybe even a couple more times. It's just gonna make the game a little bit more fun simply because like you're gonna have one more skeleton. Maybe even other other items as well. Don't worry about su subscribing screen. It's cool, man. Enjoying it is enough.
We have a belt over here with like fire and lightning resistances and some stun duration. I think I'm gonna go for it. It's also boosted by Titi. We have some Vitality Glows with Elemental Resistance. I think Elemental Resistance is a little bit more valuable than Vitality Resistance at the very beginning. Some Main Hand. Doesn't matter all that much. It's all on the Skeletons right now, so... Hey. Nice. Come over here, where are you going? Wow. The pathing. He actually wants to go all the way to the top and come back from the right side. I don't know why. Or maybe he just wanted to hate on the uh, zombies. He actually killed the zombie pack here. It's funny. So after maxing these two out... And then putting one point into this, like we're basically rushing for the bit of the crypt at this point, just make our skeletons a little bit stronger. And I think this is in fact the last devotion point that we can get from Act 1. Let's take Lifesteal, which is not doing anything for me right now, but the Twin Fangs, however, if you link this to the skeletons, it's going to be procking from every single one of them, which is quite good. Ultimately, we want to be building up to the Ratosh, this guy. And that one requires like green, red, and also some yellows. Yellows are the problem because like we have lots of green and red in my opinion. Lots of options to like take green and red that is. Behemoth is being one of them. Behemoth uh, conveniently actually like requires blue as well. Uh, which is a lot of the build up that we will make. So how about we go for the panther? Right here, it's gonna give me some... Uh, Offensive stuff. No movement speed. A movement speed would be very good as well. Something like Eel would be a very good starter simply because of the movement speed. Malagas up, Malagas up, Malagas up. <laughs> Malagas What's up, Prime? 11 months. One more month to go for a year. Much love to you, Prime. Thank you very much. I'll kill every single crystal here. It's good experience here, and at the same time, like, we, we're gonna need a lot of crystals when the time comes, so might as well just take as much as we can right now. Damage from the fangs heal the summons or the hero? It should heal the summons. And the damage of the fang should also should also scale from the pets. The pet damage of your character. Since you link it to pets. Congrats, then.
The Spence is very good experience, like there's no need not to kill them, honestly. Try and get like level 18 or something at the end of Act 1 would be pretty good. I'm guessing the quest that we have completed in Devil's Crossing is not going to be giving me like the highest experience, so... We have a necklace here with elemental, resistance and pure resistance, sure. That's much better than what we're rocking right now. There are a couple of like spawn, spo spawn points for, for an elite here. Yeah, check them out. Let's pick up the final entry here. That side is blocked apparently. It's a massive pack here. Honestly, at this point, if I wanted to, which I think I will, I'm going to close the magic jobs. We're going to start looking at only the green items. But if you would like to, you can feel free to like continue your itemization with like yellows as well. Uh, it no, like that being said, at no point in this game you should be uh, like closing the greens almost, like unless you're feeling extremely lazy. Um, it is definitely possible for you to find a green item in this game because of the itemization. That is going to be better than even the legendary options in the late, late game. So, just need to learn like the suffix and prefixes. He's in fact destroying my pets here. Interesting. I wasn't expecting this. His aura is too strong, and I'm extremely lucky with unlucky with the skeletons that I'm summoning. So they're just gonna keep on attacking and dying. We just we just need some like rain skeletons here, hopefully. The way that like he positions himself, making my even like the rains guys going to the melee range, like this this was so weird actually. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, the Titan Quest new expansion right out of nowhere. The Atlantis. Um, yeah, I'll most likely play it at, what, at some point. For sure. Brumas is saying, I'm taking way too long, I'm level 13 and I'm not even close to this point. Um, that's completely normal, just take your time, play it on your own speed. Uh, there's no competition in this game. You know, just, just enjoy your time, enjoy what you're doing, definitely. Just, like your speed is the best speed. And your speed is gonna change as, as you decide to make more characters and that is what happened to me. Like, let, let that happen to you as well, instead of trying to, you know, keep up with uh, me or someone else, yeah. Definitely. Not, not in Grundon. I should be paying a little bit of attention to this guy. He could definitely hurt us in, in veteran difficulty without any ether resistance, almost. For sure. So, let's take this a little bit seriously. I like that we have, like, ranged... Quite a lot of them. I'll try and like keep the warden away from the skeletons if possible. Oh, he's gonna destroy all of them. I should definitely take them out there. And 
that is going to be the act one. It wasn't too bad. We can check, like, to be honest with you, my start was incredibly questionable. 53 minutes for act one. Normally, it's about, like, 20 minutes with, like, the starting items and experience potion, you know, locker set and stuff like that. So we could talk about, like, this chest right over here. As you can see, like, they're called the Exalted Stash. And most of the time, you'll have them on, like, you know, specific spots and they're only one shot. So what that means is that, like, you can only open them once per difficulty per character. But they are pretty rewarding. They give, like, rare materials. They give uh, a blue item. Maybe even a legendary if it's possible. Uh, yeah. And I wouldn't worry about saving them in normal or elite. But we will talk about it a little bit more when the ultimate difficulty comes. Because you might actually consider saving them in ultimate difficulty. That's definitely possible. So at this point, we can definitely, like, uh, as you can see, like, the Borden didn't drop his MI. Uh, he has a specific green item that he can drop, a mace, in fact, that's going to be boosting our skeletons. We didn't get it, so we have a decision to, decision to make here. We definitely relog, kill the Warden one more time, try to get this item out of him. It would help me out. And I think we're going to do it, like, there's no point to rush in this video. Or this guide, definitely not. Let's just do it, get our skeletons a little bit stronger. Uh, take the game more seriously. And when we are ready to like jump into the act 2, I think I'm going to be calling the part 1. We can also clean the bags. I was wondering if we are capable of taking the quest now. We are, we are friendly with them. And apparently friendly is all you need, so you can definitely take this quest. What do you need? Is this enough fabric? There it is. It's going to also put us somewhat about like halfway through to respect it. For the friendly, there's not much that we can buy from him. I mean, supposedly, if we can find the one hand there, we are going to be switching to one hand offend. So maybe I should be checking the offense as well, so. This is a nice chest, definitely a nice chest. Requires level 20 though, so we're gonna need to wait for it a little bit. The boots are giving me 11% movement speed. Explorer footpants, very good. Ah, this is whatever. This dropped from the... Um, Warden, it's not too bad. I think I'm gonna take that. We have a couple of like components piled up in the bag, but I'm looking at it and I don't necessarily see something that's like useful for me right now, so. Components might be a little bit overwhelming when it comes to uh Grim Dawn, especially for a you know, new player. Take them like one one at a time. Don't try to learn every single one of them at, at once. It's almost impossible in that case. So just restarting the game, respawns everything. We go back to Warden and then we kill him one more time. I want mace from him. Hopefully we're gonna get lucky this time. Uh, we can talk about the MIs a little bit. What it means is that like Monster Infrequent. And Monster Infrequent is basically just, you know, that specific item is capable of dropping from that monster alone or that monster type even in some cases. So in this case, like, the Warden is going to drop his specific mace for me. That is his MI. And there, there's a lot of MIs in this game. Not not only green, in fact. There's some legendaries as well. And some blues even, yeah. Most of the time, like, the... Uh, unique thing when it comes to these are, like... They're, they're capable of, like, modifying skills. Or the character in, in, in a unique way or fashion, yeah. So you wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. Like, maybe sometimes they're capable of converting a specific ability to, to another damage type. Let's say you have, like, poison damage on one, or, like, acid damage on one, let's say. It's capable of making it fire for just that uh, ability. So there, there's, there's some, like, very cool ideas like that. Which are kind of, like, build enabling. Oh, this pack is terrible. Rip. I don't know how did that happen. The chances of this happening, like these little skeletons are obviously like your weakest. The chances of that happening is like very low when you're sitting on 17 on that. So 
It's pretty unlucky, like triple peasant skelly. <laughs> No, we can't kill this back. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Prue. Trying to get a better setup, yeah. Especially getting a bit of like the melee guys. I'll collect the Ethan crystals as well while trying to get a better setup. Drone is saying peasants are not that weak. They're obviously not as great as the uh, mages, but they do their part. Hmm. My issue, I, I, I. At the end of today, I actually don't necessarily know like their damage. Not gonna lie, but they they usually tend to die quite quite fast. And I think I would much rather have like either the archers because like with the archers I could actually like abuse the leash mechanic, so I can I can just like you know later on you will see I'll take a mobility item or a component and I'll be able to teleport from place to place. As I as I teleport the skeletons, they they rather have like a short leash range, so I can actually like abuse this to put them immediately in a new location. Um, in that case, I would much rather have the skeleton archers or the mages with me instead of uh, the peasants. So, I actually don't know, like, what is their damage. Um, it's kind of like my preference when it comes to their positioning, let's say. <laughs> What's up, then? Yo, Zona, nice to see you, bro. How are you doing? I just got the mortar trap shoulders. Well, somebody is trying to tell you something, then. For sure. <laughs> it's another fortress, unfortunately. That kind of sucks. I'm gonna go one more time, you guys. We're gonna we're gonna go hard here. Fortress is the shield, so it's not the one that I need. You were here yesterday as well for the race, yeah. I'm good. I'm good, Zona. I I really enjoyed the race yesterday. I had a nice time. Is this a good beginner build? This is going to be one of the better beginner builds, yes. And we're gonna try our best to like optimize it from the fresh. I'm not like I, I don't have anything, not even recipes in this account. That is also why I'm I'm in softcore. This is what we are doing, yes. I mean if anyone in the YouTube don't don't want to do this, you don't necessarily need to do this. I'm, I'm just trying to like have some fun here, max out my skeletons. Uh, we are going to have like, if he drops the MI, we're going to have like plus one skeleton summon, so we will have nine instead of eight cap. And uh, they're going to be a little bit stronger also. But you, you definitely could continue, especially since you can um, expect to convert to Revenant's Earth later on, which is like not that far away in fact. I want to be like level 26, level 27, something like that. So it's pretty close that we are going to be converting into Revenant's Earth, but this is pretty fun, so it's okay. As <laughs> he I get to collect um, Aethicistas as well.
Let's wait just a little bit so that like I can have an army going against them. Just boosted my skeletons so the entire army just disappeared. Try to pay attention to like how you level your skeletons. If you're in a fight, like try not to put any points because it definitely despawns them since it cannot scale while they're up. Thank you for the follows, by the way, stream. Let's do this. <laughs> I tried to move them away from him, but I failed. Oh wow. He's dying much faster this time, we're getting a little bit stronger. Ah, I guess I'm unlucky. What do you guys think, stream? Should we, should we stop farming for this? Or do we go one more time? Do we give up? Are we weak? Cosmic was saying, too bad you cannot choose which build the skeletons spawn as. That would be a little bit too strong. That would be actually like very cool if you think about it though. Like going against the boss and you're like, I want range guys, and then you summon the range skeletons. Let's do one more. Grash was saying one more as well. Let's do a faster run this time. Just gonna run through. Maybe, maybe, maybe we kill these though. <laughs> it looks delicious. Ah, it's funny because like I usually actually like get that maze instantly. I'm not really sure why it's not dropping this time. I've never farmed it this long. Uh, it shit happens, I guess. I wonder like what is the drop rate? We could actually check it from Grim Tools. If you're new to Grim Dawn, GrimTools.com is like bread and butter for this game honestly if you're into like a little bit theory crafting a little bit like checking out builds items you know skills read them um that website yeah is gonna consume a lot of time of yours actually dead for me Zona, can you link it to me on Discord? Just link it to me on any channel, it doesn't matter, I'll watch it when I have the time. I might have some time during this weekend. I actually missed watching some uh, Dota competitive scene. It's been so long. Got a blueprint from this guy. Squires, hand guards. One thing about my account, like it's definitely possible I know some of the blueprints, some of them that you can buy from like the quartermasters, and some of them maybe they dropped for me. Simply because like I played one more time on Softcore. That was for the DK. So I logged in and I deleted everything, but like the the recipes that you that we found while the death knight uh youtube guide are, are are in fact still known with this character as well so that's pretty much the only thing that i failed to reset let's say so if there's any any recipe whatsoever that we're going to use um i'll tell you where to find it basically i don't think that's going to be the case anyway it's fine This guy poisonous. Should probably like not be lazy. Take them out. This walkers.
isn't this like the fourth time or something that we're killing him? He has a shiny maze. I think he has it. Why won't you die? Why won't you die? I think he has it. I saved my skeletons, but I took the explosion. <laughs> Just like a true summoner. Yep, the Warden's Judgment Data. One cool thing about this game is that these MIs, if the monsters are capable of dropping it, when they have it, they will actually use them against you. So their power is changing as well according to the weapons that they carry. And in half of the cases, if the model is, you know, uh, letting you, uh, you can actually see it when you're fighting too. Like in this case, we were able to see the maze in Warden's hands. We have a couple of like very good items as well. So the point of like farming this was it gives less cooldown to the race skeletons. We can frequently spawn it. We have plus two to skeletons and we have one summon limit. So it's going to be much more fun to play with that. Definitely. We have like a couple of shields over here. Let's get like the most defensive one. HP physical resistance, Aether resistance. Defense 6%. That defense 6% is pretty big. I think I'm going to take the defense 6% here. This guy. It's cool. So we had like a chest upgrade from earlier on. It was required level 20, which I just hit. We have a very defensive belt over here. Why not? That's all right. I don't think so. What about these pants? Lightning, movement speed, and armor. Pretty good. Yeah, my helm is quite dated. This helm isn't too bad, but it requires a little bit more spirit. That's interesting. So, before completing the Act 1, actually, YouTube, we're going to do something else. We'll talk about the devotions a little bit. In this game, you know, some of the devotions, well, most of the devotions, constellations, I should say, uh, they require, you know some points to kick in so for instance in this case we needed a green point to kick in the bat but once we completed the bat it gives two red and three green affinity bonus so from there you could actually like go ahead and play it very greedy and remove the green now because you don't need it anymore so you could actually like use this logic to complete a lot of things and then you know take away things that are like building up to them and have like a very you know valuable build at the end if you would like to do it so so we don't need the screen anymore it could definitely go somewhere else and i think i'm gonna take the eel here some movement speed some defense some pierce resistance it's not too bad and the last thing that we're gonna do is in fact gonna speak to this guy if you don't have the expansion this won't be here but right after killing the warden this guy is here and he's gonna unlock the Forgotten Gods. The reason why we are doing this is because... Well, multiple things. We can come here. So, for you, you can collect the books, definitely the lore books. And there's going to be like three factions here that we can choose. We are going to be checking the faction vendors and checking these things specifically. These are like the mobility components for you. So we have a disengage, uh, we have a rush, sort of like a charge I'm guessing from this guy. We can check the other two as well. Let's connect this guy. This is another quarter monster. We have leap. And we have well, Vanish, which is called also Shadow Strike in this game. And the last guy right over here is going to have the Rift Stalker, which is a teleport, I believe. And then we have the Focus Rage. So, out of these six, you, I, I, I kind of recommend you to like pick one 
And we are going to be te taking the teleport because I think it's going to be fitting the character the most. The fastest one would be the Shadow Strike, in fact. But I don't care about the fastest one in this playthrough. We're going to go for this one. I think it's going to fit this character, the one that we are going to build up. So to pick this one, we need to actually get friendly with the Dreek. And how do we get that? You basically need to complete the first quest here and then select them. It's pretty easy. Just going to continue grabbing the notes. Alright, so speak to this guy. This guy, I think, takes on a challenge. Oh, that's a massive pack. And the next quest is basically, you know, speak to the cults, select yours. And I already have a waypoint up to up to here. So we're going to be selecting the Dreek in this case, I think, right? And this is it. This is all you need to do for the Forgotten God's Bite. You can leave the rest for now. And since we have done this, we are friendly with these guys. And I'll be able to buy a couple of, in fact, Rift Tears for myself. It's a very good starter tip. And carry these around. Now you can like put this on top of your medallion. And then that's going to give you a mobility. Which is the teleport in this case. So we will be able to play with the teleport. YouTube, this is going to be the part one. And from here on on, we are going to be jumping in the part two to the act two. We will go hunt Cronley down. And I'm guessing... In Act 2, we will be playing with skeletons as well. I'll also like clean my bags in Act 2 as well. Put the skeletons back up. And we have a teleport now, thanks to this. Thanks for watching, YouTube. I'll see you on the next one. And subscribe, please. Thanks.